Okay, I know it's kind of cold to the touch, especially on a freezing winter's day. But did you know that brass doorknobs actually serve a purpose apart from looking classy and shiny? Since it's a copper alloy, brass has antimicrobial properties. That means it can help get rid of harmful germs and bacteria, sometimes in up to two hours. In high traffic areas, that's all the more useful. But since brass is much costlier than other metals like nickel and steel, you barely see these types of doorknobs anymore nowadays. Speaking of lovely multi-purpose items, most screwdrivers have a tiny little secret of their own. They can sometimes be slid through a wrench so that they can be used to create more torque when twisting, not to mention the uses when it comes to bolts in hard-to-reach places. There's a reason why buttons on women's shirts are for the left-handed, and it has nothing to do with fashion. This practice dates back to the times when chambermaids were helping ladies dress themselves, and it was easier for them to perform their job with this orientation. Having the buttons placed as such indicated a sign of wealth, so it's easy to imagine why the practice carried on, even though most people dress themselves nowadays. Next time you receive a package in your mail, take a look at your box cutter. If it features some diagonal lines on the blade, you're in for a little design perk. Turns out that these are blades that snap off. Continuously cutting cardboard can dull the sharp edge of the blade. To help prevent the need to buy a brand new box cutter, the top segment along the next line can be broken off to reach a new sharp edge. To do this, check out the small hole at the base of the tool, sometimes called the blade snapper. The people that first came up with this brilliant invention were engineers inspired by the way chocolate bars are segmented. Hold on a minute, don't throw away the cardboard package just yet. Most likely, you'll have some silica gel packets somewhere at the bottom of the box. Since this gel is basically a drying tool, it gathers up the moisture out of its environment, so you can store these packets for further occasions. Whether you'll need to dry out your phone or some other electrical object, you can place them in a container next to the silica gel to reduce the damage. You don't have to be a mechanic to know when a standard car tire needs replacing since they come equipped with a neat indicator. Take a closer look, and you'll see that treads within the tire are a bunch of rubber notches. When the treads are evened out with the perpendicular bars, it's a sign you need to book an appointment with your local car service. Since most likely the tires have lost most of their traction and may not be safe for driving any longer. The upper corners of a car windshield feature textured black dots melted into the glass edges. This neat add-on isn't there for design purposes. It's called frit glazing, which means that a special type of ceramic paint is added to the window for protecting its sealant from UV rays. It also conceals and creates a coarser surface for the adhesive used to set the window in place. Whenever you're up for a drive, check out if there's a small tab under your car's rearview mirror. Bet you didn't know it's there to help switch the mirror from daytime to nighttime views. It uses a prismatic glass technology to blur the reflection and reduce the glare of headlights behind you in traffic. People came up with these manually tilted mirrors in the 1930s, but they became standard somewhere in the 1970s. While you're in the car, check out the headrests, as you most likely don't know that they carry a little disguised purpose. Of course, they're adjustable to accommodate passengers of any height so that they get the proper support for their heads and necks. The hidden feature is that they are detachable and come with two very solid metal bars. Should you ever find yourself stuck in a car and need to make a fast getaway, these bars come in handy to crack out the car windows. So you're out for a drive and you're suddenly out of gas. What I'm about to describe sounds more like a meme than an actual situation bound to happen. But what if you're in such a hurry that you accidentally drive off with the gas nozzle still in the tank? Well, the nozzles have been designed to prevent any hazards from happening, rest assured. They feature a breakaway device that will allow the hose to separate when taken out with enough force. Initially designed in the early 20th century to be worn exclusively by basketball players, sneakers soon became one of those fashion fundamentals similar to jeans and leather jackets. If you take a closer look at them, you'll see they have two extra holes on the side, similar to the shoelace holes. They're manufactured as such not only to provide extra ventilation, but to allow people to get extra creative with their laces when wearing the shoes. Admit it, you've always thought that chopsticks are merged at the end for the sole purpose of keeping them together until you're ready to dig into your meal. That may or may not be the whole truth. 
Under a more detailed inspection, the wooden tools feature a square-shaped end. Chopsticks manufactured like this date back to an old Japanese traditional design, which can help with breaking the ends easily. The separated end can then be used as a resting block for the chopsticks to keep it more sanitized in hopes it can be used again, since they won't be touching the table or any other surface. Women's bikes have a special design which, surprisingly, has a historical and fashionable purpose. The lower frame is for the most part meant to make up for the generally shorter height of ladies, compared to that of the average gentleman. While that is the case for handlebars and saddles, the overall frame is lower for an additional purpose. Way back when women wore long skirts and dresses all day, every day they needed to make sure their outfits wouldn't get caught in the frame. That's how we came up with a lower-framed bicycle, perfectly made for women and their needs at the time. The fact that toothpastes are multicolored is not just a nice perk to make dental hygiene more fun. There's a secret meaning related to each of the colors, which dates back to the 1970s. In those days, people grew more and more interested in their oral health care, and as such, they were looking for products which could do more than merely clean their teeth. One company was the pioneer in that regard, adding mouthwash to its toothpaste, meaning the blue strip. They later added on the red strip, meant to feature ingredients which helped with gum care. Speaking of toothpaste, check the cap next time you open a new tube. You may be in for a little surprise. There's a pointed cone shape inside the cap, so you can puncture the seal of the toothpaste without cutting yourself or ruining your manicure. Not to mention, it's more hygienic since you won't be able to transfer germs or other bacteria into the product itself. On the subject of bathroom countertop items, toothbrushes come with a neat add-on hidden in the bristle patterns. Apart from making the toothbrush look cooler, they also do come with a practical purpose. Most toothbrushes come with a pattern of blue bristles intertwined with white ones. The blue dye is meant to fade out, signaling the time when you need to replace your toothbrush. Dentists say that toothbrushes should be replaced every three to four months, but it does serve as a great reminder in case you forget. Still love playing with Lego? Don't judge. Hey, it's a great hobby for all ages. Notice there's a hole on top of the Lego heads? Behold, you're looking at a safety feature that the people at Lego designed to prevent choking hazards. The most dangerous issue should a person swallow any of these pieces is the blocking of the airways. Designing a hole inside the Lego head helps the air to flow freely through the piece until it can be removed safely. We're now used to all sorts of modern light bulbs, some tubular, some shaped like diamonds, and some even twisted all together. Historically, light bulbs were round and the initial shape served a purpose in itself. It was mainly connected to the fact that glass bulbs were hand-blown, which gave them the round shape to begin with. The hidden practical reason was that the light bulb filament needed to be at the same distance from every surface of the glass sphere. The easiest way to achieve this was to make the glass in the shape of a globe. It's breakfast, and you crack open a hard-boiled egg. You find that it's green. Looks disgusting. Well, it looks like you cooked it for too long. This happened because of the thin sulfur layer in the whites and iron in the yolk. Though the mixture of these chemicals is black, it's such a thin layer mixed into the yellow yolk that it turns green. But don't fear, these strange green eggs, they're completely safe to eat. While sitting for a photo, it would be weird to say anything other than cheese to get that perfect smile. But in the 19th century, it was different. Photographers would ask their subjects to say prune instead. The reason was to obtain that thin, duck-like expression. It was considered a prim and proper way to present a photograph. Strawberries aren't even considered a berry and are more of a false fruit, further identified as multiple fruit. What we believe is that the tiny little brown or white things are seeds, but they're actually individual fruits attached to its flesh. But how did this mistake start in the first place? Well, the confusion began hundreds of years ago when it was first named. However, this was a long time before botanists were even around to help clarify this mistake. Sci-fi films are often inspired by real-life space exploration, but there is one thing that NASA implemented after watching a sci-fi movie. A 1929 flick, Woman in the Moon, introduced a countdown that built up anticipation. NASA found this helpful and started using it in 1969. Not only is it an exciting moment, 
but it does also have a practical use. It helps the massive team behind each launch ensure they're synchronized perfectly down to the last second. This one might change your appetite the next time you see a juicy apple. Usually picked around August to November, the shiny supermarket apples are covered in hot wax, then hot air dried and sent into cold storage. Before they arrive at the supermarket looking fresh, they've been in storage for anywhere between 6 to 12 months. I bet you can't do this. Try and hum while closing your nose. No noise came out, right? Without an exit for air, it's physically impossible to make any noise. The world's largest national park in Greenland covers a staggering 375,000 square miles. That's twice the size of California. But although it's huge, there are only up to 40 permanent residents in this massive area, making it one of the most isolated places on Earth. Issues with bad breath? Gum is the typical choice, but other things are just as effective. Cucumber is a great natural solution and a more efficient one. Working similarly to gum, it helps stimulate saliva production. But what makes it different from other odor defeaters is its water content. Washing away any unwanted pieces of food still remaining also helps to avoid a dry mouth, which causes odors. You would think that Z would be the last letter put into the alphabet, but it was actually J. Long ago in 1524, an Italian grammarian wanted to identify a way to separate I and J. Together, they were a vowel, and J was then used as a consonant that sounded like Y. It wasn't until 1633 when an English grammar book explained the proper use of J, and it was entered into the alphabet in the way we use it today. The first vacuum cleaner was invented in 1901, the size of a Winnebago, and it took four people to operate it. A petrol engine used to supply power also required a horse to move it around. I would suppose that it was mainly used for cleaning up after the horse in the end. It wasn't long after that they found easier ways to clean the house, and in 1910 the first handheld vacuum was invented. If you've been told that you sweat like a pig, there is no need to be offended. It's actually more of a compliment, as pigs don't sweat. All swine are born without sweat glands, and the only way to cool off is to find a nice puddle, or more famously, some mud. Umbrellas were invented around 4,000 years ago, and were only socially acceptable for women to use them. Their original purpose was to keep the sun out of your eyes and as a fashion accessory. It wasn't until the mid-18th century that men were allowed to use them, and the modern, water-resistant version we use today was made. And most importantly, the very first dog umbrella was invented in 1965. Dentists can be very strict on what sweets you eat, so you would be amazed to learn that cotton candy was invented by a dentist. John C. Wharton a dentist and confectioner wanted to give his clients a treat every visit. Hmm, maybe he gave them this treat to ensure they came back more often. If we could theoretically build a highway to outer space and could adjust the effects of gravity, it would only take you an hour to drive to space if you drove at 60 miles per hour. Let's make this happen, Elon Musk. How heavy could a cloud be? It looks like it couldn't weigh too much as it floats easily up in the sky. But a cloud could weigh anywhere up to 1 million pounds. That massive cloud is able to float above you because the air's lighter up there and less dense than dry air below. You can see the same effect when observing oil floating on water. You think you yawn because you were bored or tired? Well, it's a myth. You yawn more often later in the day, but it's just your body helping you remain alert. Through inhaling cool air and stretching the muscles, it cools the flow to the brain. Researchers identified brain sizes in different species of animals based on their yawns. The larger the brain, the longer the yawn. So how long do you yawn? Playing video games regularly increases gray matter in the brain for all you gamers out there, which helps to boost brain connectivity through muscle control, memories, perception, and spatial navigation. An experiment at a New York medical center found that surgeons who played three hours of video games made 37% fewer mistakes and performed 27% faster than other non-gaming doctors. Have you ever wanted to be just a little bit taller? Well, get your space boots on. The human body can grow up to 3% taller when in space. While living on Earth, our spines are compressed by gravity. 
But in zero gravity, the decompression lets the spinal discs expand, allowing the spine to lengthen. Cows don't have full REM sleep while standing, but they can have a light nap. This is an evolutionary trait that helped their ancestors avoid predators. They stand idle during a power nap if they need to make a quick getaway. They do have full REM sleep, only by lying down. They only need four hours of sleep to fully energize for the next day. Women have more taste buds than men, and 35% of women are considered super tasters, and only 15% of men are. Not surprisingly, more women prefer pineapple on their pizza. Now, don't be triggered if you disagree. While sleeping, you're incapable of sneezing. This might seem impossible, especially when you have a cold. But while your body is resting, the nerves that help you sneeze are as well. While you sleep, the brain ignores any irritating sensations or tickling that would typically create the sneeze. Our calendar year once used to end in February. This is because it was the last month to be added to the calendar. A calendar year once only lasted 304 days, so there was plenty of room for more months. It was changed in the year 46 BCE to the calendar we know today by Julius Caesar. They previously followed the lunar calendar. Julius Caesar saw issues with this as it didn't match the seasons. He hired an astronomer who created a calendar based on the solar year. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Hey, have you ever been vibing out in your room, listening to some of your favorite songs, admiring the subwoofer of your speaker as it delivers magnificence to your eardrums? We all have. But have you ever asked yourself why that same speaker, along with other speakers across the globe, is almost always black? Some of you are probably screaming at your screen right now about your speaker being green, red, or any other color found in the rainbow. Number one, I said, almost always. And number two, if you look closely at the gorgeous design of your brightly colored music player, you'll often find that the speaker beneath it is still colored black. One possible explanation for this is that the original technology of speakers had a diaphragm with black particles on it. So, as soon as a sound is amplified, it sends a charge through the diaphragm, and these black particles are driven upwards. The carbon particles bouncing and touching the upper membrane of the diaphragm are responsible for creating some of the distinct sounds from our speakers that we all love so much. Speaker manufacturers must have gotten tired of their products changing color with prolonged use, combined with these black particles settling on the upper membrane of the diaphragm. So, their logical solution was to color most speakers black. Another more practical belief as to why speakers are mostly colored black is that it's a hue that easily matches up with many types of decor. Walls, furniture, and clothes all often look quite well when combined with this color, which is why it's so prevalent everywhere you go. Listening to music has repeatedly scored in the top 10 pastimes in the US based on research. Nowadays, you find sound speakers everywhere. In your television, laptop, and your phone, you can't escape them. But let's take a look at how they started off. Their origins are in radio and telephone technology. The first form of a speaker was developed by Johann Philipp Reis in 1861. The German was a self-taught inventor and installed the speaker on his telephone. It was just about able to reproduce clear tones, but it could also replicate muffled speech after a few revisions. Alexander, Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone, decided to try and produce an improved version of Rice's speaker. Essentially, Bell and other inventors wanted to make an electrodynamic speaker. By 1877, it was still yet to exist, but due to the desire of inventors worldwide to change this, Research confirmed that it was extremely possible to make one. In particular, the work of Werner von Siemens, who came up with the idea of an electromagnetic coil-driven speaker, was a driving force in arriving at this conclusion. Why are there magnets in speakers, you might ask? Every speaker nowadays has an electric current, something the inventors were discussing would never have taken for granted at any point in their lives. When this electric current is changing, it produces a magnetic field. To make the panel of the speaker move, 
magnets are used to create an opposing magnetic field which creates vibrations. These vibrations are the sound we end up hearing. The bigger the magnet, the louder the speaker will be. Another inventor by the name of Thomas Edison from the US had filed a British patent for a system using compressed air for an amplifying mechanism. The first commercial electric loudspeaker saw the light of day only in 1924. The sound quality produced by the speaker was good enough for motion pictures. It took nearly 20 years for the next groundbreaking development in the world of loudspeakers. This came with the arrival of the duplex driver in 1943. It offered better clarity and coherence at high volumes, which was important in movie theaters. Fittingly, it was nicknamed the voice of the theater. The duplex driver was immediately tested by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and instantly made its film house industry standard in 1955. Until now, this loudspeaker design is still used. Indeed, the film industry does seem to put a lot of effort into its sound, and so do the theaters we watch them in. You may have noticed that these buildings often have thick curtains on the walls. These are soundproof or acoustic curtains, and both are much thicker than regular curtains. They will either consist of heavier fabrics that are tightly woven or have better quality linings. This means that these curtains will absorb sound and reduce the acoustic reflection off the ceiling, windows, and flat walls of the room. This ultimately creates a much better sonic experience. The carpet floors are so thick in theaters for the same reason. It helps to trap sound by providing insulation. From a practical standpoint, this carpet is also set up to prevent the sound of footsteps during film screenings. This concept of trapping sound is also the reason why putting a phone inside a cup will make the phone speaker seem louder. Any speaker sitting or suspended in an open space projects its sound in all directions. As the speaker vibrates to create sound waves, an equal amount of energy leaves from both the front and the back. By placing a speaker in some form of enclosure, we can redirect some of the energy that comes from the back of the speaker and project it forwards. By putting the speaker in a cup, you're directing the sound more efficiently. It travels only one way, making it seem louder than what you'd hear when you take it out of the cup. Speaking of phones and speakers, ever wonder why your mobile device makes your speaker produce a buzzing noise? This can occur when the two gadgets are near one another and your mobile is trying to send and receive data. The transfer of information produces electromagnetic disturbances in the medium around the speakers. It creates noise in the audio, and as a result, you can hear the buzzing sound coming from the speaker. A simple way to protect the amazing vibe your speaker is creating for you from this irritating buzzing noise is just to move your phone away from your speaker, or vice versa. This will eliminate what is officially known as electromagnetic interference. Research across America shows that, on average, 74% of people own two or more pairs of headphones. 46% of them mention they listen to their headphones for more than two hours per day. Some choose the headphones by their looks, others by the sound quality. In either case, finding the right pair is important, since a lot of people are willing to spend over $100 on it. Headphones have become a true fashion accessory. That's why well-known figures are trying to make an impact in the headphone industry like it's the fashion industry. Music moguls Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine came up with the idea for the now world-famous Beats by Dre Headphones brand. They were walking along the Pacific Ocean one day in 2006, discussing a sneaker deal as they had an offer on the table from a major brand in that arena. After some discussions, they decided they wanted to do something they were more passionate about and landed on headphones. The duo's idea turned into a brand that was purchased by Apple in 2014 for $3 billion. It was the largest deal in Apple's history, and Beats by Dre controlled 70% of the headphone market at the time of signing. The move allowed Apple to take over the headphone space. The release of their popular wireless AirPods headphones in 2016 was another reason it happened. But how do these popular wireless headphones that many of us own actually work? These headphones rely on internal batteries to have enough power to remain wireless. Most often, they have conveniently built-in rechargeable batteries, 
But sometimes, they keep going thanks to standard AA or AAA batteries. They receive wirelessly transmitted signals from their paired audio sources, be it your phone or laptop. These signals are encoded by the source device and transmitted most commonly via radio frequencies or infrared carriers. The headphones receive the signal and decode it to audio. And just like that, it's music to your ears.